Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to show you how to control what page is being shown on the HMI via a bit in a PLC. We often get a lot of requests for uh, how can I make the page on an HMI change to something uh, special based on a bit within a PLC. So if you look here in my current program here in Crimson 3, if I go over to communications I'll just show you what I have going on here. I currently got, I currently have on the network tab here, uh, I've got protocol one set up as a Modbus TCP master, and I'm currently talking to some Turk I/O called the FEN20 products. Uh, here we have a couple slaves under there, Modbus TCP. And if I uh, wanted to, if I go over here to data tags on the left, and since I'm looking at a specific bit, and a bit would always be a flag tag, folks. So if I hit the little pole down right here where it says new, and I want to choose a flag tag because that's going to be a bit tag. So if I click flag tag here, move this down below, and let's call this uh, bit underscore zero. Notice it's currently blue because I haven't mapped it to anything. But over here in the source on the data tab, here the source where it says the word internal, if I hit the pole down here, because I've named those devices earlier, here's uh, one of the devices. I'll click on this one here. And the Turk I.O., it happens to map its registers, its I.O. to the holding registers, the input data. So I'll choose this default location here, click OK. And then if you notice here, currently this is grayed out, this bit zero. So I'm going to hit the pole down here and choose a bit array little Indian, and I'll leave it at bit zero here. So that takes care of that guy, and I'm going to make this a read only for this example. Uh, so that'll take care of bit zero. If I hit the button right here called Smart Duplicate, what's really cool in Crimson 3 is it'll automatically index this down to bit one here. And look here, folks, it automatically goes to the next bit within that whole word, which is pretty cool. So we've got two uh, tags right here, one mapped to bit zero, another one mapped to bit one. And what I've got on my example database here, if I go over to Display Pages on the left, you're going to see that I currently have got uh, some different pages set up. Here's page one, here's, or here's page one here, here's page two, and page three. If I go back to the main one here. My goal is that whenever uh, the bit zero goes on in that PLC, I would like it to go to page one, for instance. And then when bit one goes on, I'd like it to go to page two. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go over to the left and click on data tags on the left, I'll click back on that bit zero here okay so whenever this guy goes on my goal is to make it go to page one for instance so the easy way to do this is to simply go to the triggers tab here go to the triggers tab because I chose a flag tag by default or not by default but I declared this a flag tag when I first did this thing right here this little pull down I'm gonna click here the pull down and you'll see you have some options active on, active off, and change the state. I'll click on the active on, and basically whenever this guy goes on, I want it to go to page one. I want the display to change to page one. So if you, just to show you where I find this information, over in the lower right hand corner of Crimson 3, there's the system icon here. If you click on the system area, and then expand the functions tree, <clears throat> And I believe if you go into the page category here, expand the page category, you're going to see there happens to be a function here called go to page. If you're curious what that function actually does, you can always right click on it and do show help info and it should open up the PDF. Let me make this smaller so you can see it. Should open the PDF that explains what it does. Go to page. I'm going to close that because we don't need to see it. So in that case, I can either drag this guy, whoops, I can either click on the go to page and drag it up to here like this. Notice it automatically filled in the name page one. If you would have named the page something differently over here in display pages, you would want to memorize that name and then just type that into here. Now I'm going to do the same thing on bit one. If I go to bit one here, on this guy, on bit one, I'm going to have it when it goes on. Maybe I want it to go to page two. So this time I'll just type go to page open parentheses, page two, end parentheses, enter. When I hit enter, it turns blue, that means it accepted it. 
always folks remember anytime you guys type within Crimson 3 you always want to hit the enter or tab button to make sure that the program uh, takes it if you type something wrong for instance maybe I meant to go to page 4 I hit enter Crimson's gonna ask you hey you don't have a page called page 4 did you want to create one automatically maybe sometimes you might say yes to this in this case I'm gonna say no that must be a typo this really should be page 2 and then it takes it so I'm gonna go ahead and download this to our screen to see how it works I'll hit the update button here because I actually have a real graphite HMI plugged in here and I'm using the web browser of it so you're looking at right here the web browser of that particular screen and as you watch here I'll turn on bit zero here we go and you'll look right here folks this is bit zero right here let's see what happens if I turn on bit zero look it automatically went to page one as you see right there and then if I turn on bit one this guy right here you'll see that it went to that particular page now if I turn these two guys off like so you see that it stays on page one because the last trigger was this guy right here so now if I turn page or I'm sorry if I turn bit zero back on again you'll see it goes back to page one let me show you something else here let me go back to display pages I'll click on the main and I'm gonna put these two tags on each screen so you can actually see what I'm talking about I'll throw them right here I'll put them right here and I'm gonna go copy and then I'm just gonna paste this on each page in the same location you can either do control V as in Victor or like that. Let's try it one more time so you can see what I'm talking about here. Back to the browser. Okay, so you can see right now I'm looking at page zero because nothing's on. The two bits are off right here. If I turn on bit zero, here we go, I'll turn it on. Boom, you can see it goes to page one. If I turn it back off, it's going to stay on page one because I don't have anything taking it back. And then if I hit the other one, you'll see it goes right to page two. So while I'm on page two, if bit zero happens to go on, you'll see it goes to page one and so forth. Now that's one way that you can use the triggers to direct what particular page you want it to go to. There's another way that I'd like to show you that might be um, more applicable or a little bit easier to understand or, or let you give it a little more control here. So I'm going to go back here to my bits and I'm going to turn off what I'm doing right here. I'm going to disable both of these options. And you'll see that I've also got a couple other tags here that are numeric type. And these guys are looking at the whole word. They're looking at the whole word of basically where these two bits are coming from. Another way to do this would be go over here to Programs and simply write a very simple program using what's called the switch command. And the switch part, if you guys happen to go to the link or the help pull down and go to the contents, and in the contents is our manual, and in the manual, if you happen to go to page 234, or let me make this smaller so you guys can see it here. Maybe I won't. Uh, well, it probably won't. Oh, well. But um, in this case, there's a function in C called switch. And basically, it will compare what's in here, and you can make up, make up different case statements here. So let's try this in this program. <clears throat> we'll go here, and we'll just type switch, open parentheses, I'm going to monitor this tag, the decimal equivalent. So I'll drag this guy out here like this. End parentheses, enter. And then if you remember from my classes, I like to teach where you do open brackets. And then I'll do enter, enter. Give some close space, tab across, and close brackets. Now between here, I'm going to say case 1. Whenever the PLC equals number 1, I might do this. I'll type go to page. <clears throat> end parentheses page one end parentheses semicolon enter and then if that condition's true I'll do a break it means I'm done with the test here then if I go here and say case two I'll do the same thing here I'll say go to oops ah page page two in this case notice the pneumatics or the capitalization doesn't matter I'll do another one here for giggles. I'll say case three, meaning when both bit zero and one are on, that would be a number three in decimal world. In this case, I'll do this, go to page. And then I'll enter out of this. 
And then the last part here, if, if the PLC register doesn't equal one, two, or three, then I'm gonna say default doesn't equal any of those. Oops. Then what I'll do is I'll say, you know what, go to page, and I think I've got page zero in my listing here as well. So I'll do, whoops, like that, and then I'll break again here. All right, if it, all of this is correct, or you've got this in here done, you need to translate the program. This little button up here, only when you click out here, does the translate button. You need to compile or translate. So I'll hit translate, and uh, apparently I didn't type that word correct, so I'll say no, and it puts me quite close to where the error is. Let's try it again here, team. Ah, what am I doing wrong here? And this is supposed to go to page zero. <laughs> so I am human. Let's try it again here. Ah, there we go. All right, so we've got the program. The diamond is green, which means it's been compiled correctly. So now this time what I can do, guys, is I'll go back to data tags on the left. I'm looking at the PLC. This guy here is the one I did. Let me show you back here the program. Notice right here, this PLC, that's the tag I'm looking at. So back here in data tags, if I go to the triggers tab for this guy right here, and if I hit the pull down here and I can say change in value, and uh, if I put a zero, it doesn't really matter what it changes to. Any time that thing changes, I want to run that program. So I'll go down here to programs on the right-hand side, and I'll just simply drag the program one right into here like this. So any time that thing changes, yeah, it should execute that program and check to see what, the, what page I should be on. So let's go ahead and download this to it and see what happens here. Download it to my screen. Wait for the web browser to come back up. Here we are. So we're looking at the default right here is page zero. If I turn on bit zero right here, notice it takes me to page one. If I turn on, uh, I'll turn that guy off, so you'll see that the, the PLC register goes back to the default. There's the zero. If I turn on bit one, which is a two in the decimal world right here, this is, this is second bit, or first bit zero, bit one. So you see it goes to page two. If I turn on both of those guys, right here you see now the decimal goes to page three because now the decimal is equal to three here and then if I happen to turn off that guy you'll see it goes back to page two if I turn it off here it goes right back to page one and so forth so I think in my opinion this method here gives me a little more control over it than doing the triggers tabs on the bits just my two cents on it because I could always go back to this program here and uh, make changes to it and na na navigate to other pages. The same thing would be if you happen to be communicating to an Allen Bradley PLC, no difference. You go over here to a protocol, maybe I'm talking DF1 to one of my Allen Bradley PLCs. I click here. I got this guy. I'm just going to go ahead and make this AB. Uh, this is maybe a slick 503 model. And I would just simply go over here. And on the slick, um, let me click right here. If I was to create a flag tag, and I want to look at the bits here, the bit table, so on this guy, I'm looking at the tag one here, data tab, hit the pull down right here, go down to my Allen Bradley. These are the particular registers in here that I can see. If I went to the bit table here, here's the bit three, word zero here. Notice, I always want to say to you here, notice how this is grayed out. Hit the pull down and choose bit array little Indian, and that lets you parse that whole word up into individual bits just like I was doing here and you're off to the races. The other thing you could have did is you could have created a numeric tag here. Ah, hold on a minute. Get the little pole down here and create a numeric tag and have it look at the exact same bit, that same location right there, and then this will do exactly the same thing as I'm doing up here under decimal, the same exact method. So anyway, that's just a quick video on how you can use the uh, bits in a PLC to allow you to navigate to different uh, pages in uh, your HMI uh, for Crimson 3. So if you got any questions or anything, please uh, give us a call or let us know. And uh, thanks a lot for checking it out. Have a good day.